tutorial explains how to add maps to a mobile web app. I'm Peter Thompson. We're going to use a library called Leaflet. Leaflet needs to be loaded from the same host as the rest of your web page, so address locally like this. We also want a style sheet for Leaflet. We create a div that will hold the map. In this case, I've simply called it map with a style, width, height, and border. This style could be placed in a separate style sheet. Initially, we'll look at a fixed map, and I've given it a fixed latitude and longitude, and this is the location of Hay Tor on Dartmoor, and an initial zoom of 10. We then create the variable map using this latitude, longitude and zoom. Maps need a layer of tiles and we're using the OpenStreetMap.org as a demonstration, but don't use this as a production website. The servers are not designed for handling a lot of traffic, but they're happy to be used for demonstrations. We've set a maximum zoom of 17 and an attribution. The attribution is this line at the bottom. And when you're using open source maps, you should always be sure to add the attribution as well. An alternative to the open street maps would be to use Thunder Forest. You need to sign up for a free key and a free plan. And there's no need to add credit card details if you're just experimenting with low numbers of map downloads. So you would replace the link to the OpenStreetMap with the link to the Thunder Forest, and again, a maximum zoom of 17, and you would put an appropriate attribution for Thunder Forest. Having set up the map, we add this to the map, and this would produce the map without these markers in the middle. And we can zoom in on the map. That's the maximum zoom, so able to see footpaths in detail, and we can zoom right out as well. So this is the open source map. A lot of detail there. So we've created our basic map. On the map, we want to have markers, and here you can see that at my lat, my long, so the same location as the center of this map in this instance, we've bound a pop-up that contains, this is Hay Tor, open pop-up. We've also, as part of this, added a circle, again with the center, my lat, my long, a diameter, a color, a red, a fill colour, which is a slight pink, I'm not sure it's going to come out in the video, within the circle, which is transparent. And then we add this to the map, so it's add to map, bind, pop-up. That creates these markers here, which says this is Hay Tor, and the circle. Now we've got other ways of adding markers as well. And I'll just scroll down so that you can see them more details. And this is a more suitable method if we are putting in several markers in different locations. Each marker has a name. It can have a URL. I've set a URL on the second one. A latitude, a longitude, name, URL, latitude, longitude. Now, this list of markers could be of any length, so we could add a lot more markers here without any problem, following the same structure. So each marker starts with one of these brackets, ends with one of these brackets, and a comma. There is no comma following the last marker. 
and the list of markers is enclosed within the square brackets. Then we simply read these in. So we're starting with a variable i equals zero to i markers dot length. And so that will pick up each marker in turn. It doesn't matter how long the list is, this will simply iterate over your list. And then for each marker in the list, we are creating a marker. We're creating the HTML for this marker, and then we are adding it to the map. You wouldn't need to edit this code here. This simply places the markers using the information you provide. So if you want to place your markers at a different location, you would be editing this code, but not the section that transfers that to the map. And that has then added your extra markers to the map. So I just move the page up a little and scroll down you can see that that is the end of the script. So everything on this map has been created on this page. So very easy to edit and create a map and cr edit the markers, place them where you want them. The important thing to note for a static map is that you edit this to be the latitude and longitude for the map that you want. And that can be anywhere in the world. So this is the basic structure of a map to go into your mobile app. Next, we will look at how to create this dynamically so that the map is drawn according to the location of the user without the user having to add any of these figures or details. This time I've separated the different components of a map into separate files with the HTML here, JavaScript here, and markers in a separate file. Again, we start with the same structure, loading our leaflet JavaScript library to create our map. We have a div for the map, and again I've given it a width and height. This could again be in a separate star sheet. We're loading the markers from this file here, and our own JavaScript is in this leaf-map.js file. The page starts with a where am I button, this button here. This is calling the where am I function. It's using navigator.geolocation to find the location of the mobile app or the browser that's running this mobile app. In the case of my example, I'm using a desktop computer, so the location that's provided will be slightly away from where I actually am at the moment. Then we get a function for success in locating the position, and another function if there's an error in locating the position. If we're successful, we will get a latitude and longitude as our coordinates. And in a mobile device, this could be fairly accurate to within a few meters using a built-in GPS unit. I'm actually writing these values into a div in our document. And then we're calling make my map with the latitude and longitude that we have obtained from this geolocation call. So we're passing the parameters of latitude and longitude to our map creation software. We're calling make my map. And here is make my map, which is very similar to the static example that we saw earlier. We're receiving my lat and my long. We're panning to this new location of my lat and my long. 
zooming in at a level of 12. Again, we're using tiles from OpenStreetMap as a demonstration with a maximum zoom of 17 and an attribution that will appear at the bottom of the map. Again, there's the code if you use Thunder Forest. We're adding a marker to our map which simply says you are here and a circle round it to make it easier to recognize the point on the map and we will add this to the map. So if I now click on our map, where am I? We need to allow our device location access and according to this geolocation I am here and if I zoom in I appear to be at a college. Somewhere near Birmingham. Unfortunately, this, this system cannot locate an accurate location unless you have a GPS or some other method, which is being developed, but not available on my system at the moment. So here we have the location. Um, if I scroll down, We've also added some markers, and again, it's the same code as we saw before, iterating through our list of markers, placing them on the map. So, simply offering a group of markers like this that locate the markers on the map, this iterates through them and will mark them on the map. So this is how a dynamic map works. A location, latitude and longitude from a GPS transferred into the map to mark where you actually are. You are here. Maps can also be drawn on as the location changes to produce a track with a series of markers showing your movements on a map.